Pag ganitong kapaskuhan, dapat hindi lang tayo lagi nagsasaya. Iniisip din natin yung malalalim and sometimes not very, very joyful aspects of Christmas. Kasi ang Christmas ay may kakambal eh. Kakambal niya ng Biyernes Santo. At kakambal din niya ng Pasko ng Pagkabuhay. Isang buong movement of God. So dapat kumpleto yung idea. Ephesians 5.15 Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Unwiseness of the wise men. Meron ba sila noon? Lord, salamat po dahil patuloy kayong nagpapalago ng aming isipan, nagtuturo, nagpapaliwanag. At ngayon na sa aming Panginoong tumanggap ng mga paliwanag, pagtuturo, pagtutuwid mula sa inyo. Especially things that are related to the season that we celebrate. Father, be our speaker. Liberate us, teach us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we pray with thanksgiving. Yung mga wise men are mga permanent fixtures of celebrations. Ano nga ba talaga sila? At ano nga ba talaga ang pinaggagawa nila? Matthew 2, 1 to 2. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. After Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. So definitely these wise men were not Jews, they were not Israelites, they were foreigners. They came from a faraway land called gener- generically the east. Yung wise in English uh, was translated from Magi, which was translated still from an older language. Sila yung gumagawa dati ng mga tinatawag na magic. They were astrologers. Some would call them astronomers. But they read the movements in the heavens. They understood and interpreted the movements of heavenly bodies. They were probably the, ancest- the ancestors of present-day scientists. Because they exercised both science and magic, wonder, mystery, and information at the same time. In other words, sila yung maraming alam sa kanyang mga bagay. And to be called wise in the context of wise men doesn't necessarily guarantee super talino. Tawag yan sa kanila. This was a class of people that held secret knowledge. Knowledge that was unknown to ordinary people. So the wise there means a group of people who were dedicated to such studies and practices, not necessarily always practically maalam or matalino. So these kind of men came to Jerusalem. They asked people, where is the child who has been born to be the king of the Jews? So what's the unwiseness here? There's going to be disturbance. Because there's a sitting king and then there are those na hari harian the religious elite. And then here comes foreigners, clueless of the social milieu, the social situation. And they come going around, they go around asking people, where is the king of the Jews? He was born. Don't you think you will upset the social system with such an issue? And they could not go into the city unnoticed. These were wise men, presumably also very rich. And therefore, they had bodyguards, they had slaves, they had servants. Malaking grupo to, hindi pwedeng hindi mapansin. And so they go around asking kung saan ipinanganak yung king of the Jews. How do you think will the king in the palace react? So Matthew 2.2, 2, they go on, we saw the star that shows he was born. We saw it rise in the sky in the east and have come to worship him. Another unwiseness, losing track of the star. They started off so well, being guided by heavenly bodies, and then they entered the city and began to ask people. Starting with a heavenly star, they continued their quest with earthly inquiry, asking mere mortals. Of course, nobody could tell them. As you can see, God very, very obviously bypassed Israel when Jesus was born. Nobody knew that he was born. Not their priests, not their king, not their royalty, not their elite, and not even the masses. No one knew. And God revealed that Jesus was born to some foreigners in faraway land. It would take outsiders to make Israelites, the Israelites know that the Son of God was born. But there's wisdom, well, wisdom here because they came to worship. pumunta kami para worship but of course, there's insecurity here that you will cause among the religious leaders because if you wanted to worship, you should go to the Jewish temple. 
And the Jewish temple was totally unaware of what was happening, so it's left out of the story. How do you think will the priests react to such a news? And another unwiseness here, publicity. In such an unfriendly location, they were very loud about their quest. Matthew 2, 3, when King Herod heard about this, it upset him as well as everyone else in Jerusalem, meaning the leadership, see? It upset the king. Matthew 2, 4, Herod called a meeting of all the leading Jewish priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah would be born. At the time, the scholars, both the scientific and religious scholars, were all in one group. They were the priests. The religious leaders were the custodians of knowledge, both practical, heavenly, and all else. So he assembled this group of learned and informed people, the elite of the town. At sabi niya, saan ba ipapanganak itong tinatawag na Messiah na to? Because there's a tradition of waiting for a Messiah. It was a popular notion, although people did not know the details. So Herod was not Jewish. He was Idumean. He was a foreigner. He was appointed by Rome to be king. He was not even part of the Jewish royal family. So he was as foreigner as anybody could get. So he asked the locals who were very informed about these kind of things. Sabi niya, saan ba ipapanganak tong tinatawag na Messiah? Bakit may mga naghahanap dito? And some people even claim these wise men to have been kings. And probably they were. Kings and wise men. Because kung hindi sila king, but naman sila bibigyan ni Herod ng audience? Hindi dapat nagtanong lang sila sa counterpart nila doon sa mga barangay captain, doon sa mga lesser officials. But why would the king receive them in the palace if they were not royals at the very least? Matthew 5, Matthew 2, 5 to 6, they answered in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, just as the prophet wrote. So it was written. The religious leaders were upset. Why? Because this birth is going to bring changes. Changes in the status quo, in the power equilibrium, in the balance of power. And they don't want any changes because they were at the top of the apex of that power system. Siyempre, yung king at saka mga priests, sila yung amo ng buong bayan, e pag may nagbago, baka mabago yung position nila, they don't want that. These priests, these religious people were conservative. They were the conservative kind. And you know, conservatives means they don't like change. Pag sinabing conservative, ayaw ng change, kaya gusto mag-conserve. Let's conserve this, let's not change this because this benefits us. And the progressive are those that are opposite. They change from glory to glory. If you are going to change from glory to glory, you cannot be conservative. Because to be conservative means to preserve what you already had before, you will not accept anything new, you will not grow. Kalaban ng growth, spiritual or intellectual growth, yung conservatism. Conservatism only seeks safety in the darkness of a, pa, of a cave. Para walang palitan, sila lagi ang laman, sila lagi ang secure. Matthew 2, 7 to 8. Then Herod had a private meeting with the wise men from the East. After talking with the local intellectuals, who could not tell him exactly details, then he had a private audience with the guests. Actually, he was doing an investigation. He learned from them the exact time they first saw the star. So, doon siya nag-research sa mga dumating. Apparently, the star had been seen two years earlier. So, any time between two years ago and now, Jesus would have been born. So at the oldest, Jesus would have been two years, doon sa Belen Exena, which is imprecise, but cinematic. Or, kakapanganak lang, pero masyadong naaga yung star. Whatever. It could have been anywhere from one, from day one to two years. So, two years ago na lumabas yung star, na nagbadya, na isinilang, o isisilang na si Jesus. He learned from them the exact time that they first saw the star, then he sent them to Bethlehem. Nagkaroon siya ng libreng investigador. Ito mga clueless guests that the king wanted information that he could use against Jesus. He said, go and look carefully for the child. So now he's asking for a search. 
When you find him, come tell me. Then I can go worship him too. You know that this is fake news. Hindi siya mag-worship. Pero palibasa, sinabi ng mga wise men that they came to worship. So inuuto sila nitong king. Sabi niya, I will worship too. Pakisabi lang sa akin, i-text agad, pag nalaman niyo kung exact location niya, nasan ba talaga siya? At nang ako, maka-worship din. The unwiseness here on the part of the wise men, there was no discernment at all. There was so much cluelessness as to the evil intentions of the king. Kahit pa officially titled sila na wise, they were not really that street smart after all. Kaya kahit sa atin mga kapatid, kahit pa tayo may official title that suggests that we could be wise, ingat-ingat din. Lalo hindi naman lahat na magaling sa academic, magaling sa practical life. Hmm? Hindi ko mo edukado sa mga paaralan, eh, marunong na nga sa aktual na buhay. So, mas, mas edukada nga, mas burara sa love life. Eh. Hmm? Hindi naman lahat. Mga 99 lang. At sabi nitong si King, so, tell me, then I can go and worship him too. It was definitely a deception. Even this Herod was unwise. But hindi na rin siya nagpadala ng spice. Umupa lang sana siya ng dalawang taong sumunod doon sa mga ngayon. Hindi nakita na nila kung saan pinanganak. Pero isa pa rin siyang unwise. Not all kings are wise. Matthew 2, 9 to 10. After the wise men heard the king, they left. They saw the same star that they had seen in the east and they followed it. Yun naman pala eh. Bakit ba naman kasi nagtanong-tanong pa sila sa mga tao? Eh, ando naman yung star. The star went before them until it stopped above in the place where the child was. This star must be very, very small. No? Kasi yung tunay na size ng mga stars, far away, malaki pa sa earth yun. So this must have been a mini star. Baka yung mga stars sa Christmas tree nyo, who knows? Di ba? So, mga parang parol. They were very happy and excited to see the star. So, as you can see, wala naman talagang na-accomplish yung kanilang very public and very noisy search. Hindi lahat ng tanong, hindi lahat ng paghahanap kailangan i-post sa Facebook. <laughs> hindi lahat ng inyong mga nararamdaman, mga tanong, mga reklamo sa buhay, kailangan nyo ilagay sa inyong wall. Wala naman napapala. Minsan kapahamakan pa. So, did the star disappear for a moment, then reappeared? We are not told. If it didn't disappear at all, they should have been wise enough to keep following it and not to make noise in Jerusalem. Not the most troublesome city under the Roman Empire. Jerusalem was the most troublesome post that any Roman ambassador or any Roman governor could be assigned to. Napaka-problematic ng city na yan kasi laging may gulo. Bakit laging may gulo? Kasi mga religyoso yung mga tao doon. Alam nyo, pag maraming religyoso, laging may gulo. So ang gulo-gulo-gulo nila, natatakot ang mga Romans na ma-assign yan. As, uh, as la, katulad ni Pilate, sabi niya, wala kasalanan to, pero ang gulo-gulo ng mga tao, baka mag-rayo to. Sige, ipako na. Nagugas na lang siya ng isang palanggan ng tubig na sa kamay niya. At sige na, kasi ayaw niyang i-displace yung magugulo mga taong ito. Sabi niya, kayo-kayo yan, nag-aaway-aaway kayo. Pare-pareho kayo ng tinatawagan na Diyos. Pero para walang gulo, sige, ipako. Actually, nag-ingay sila ng ingay, nagtanong sila ng nagtanong walang na-accomplish. Kung nawala man yung star for a while, hindi eh, parang walang direction sa buhay natin, ano application yan mga kapatid? Pag walang clear direction, wait. Be quiet, be still. Because that star will reappear. Sa buhay nyo, Pastor, hindi ko po alam ang gagawin ko. Ang dami-dami kong kailangan desisyon. Hindi ko po alam ang dapat gawin. Di ka mag-decide. Di pala alam eh. Be still. Wait upon the Lord. Kasi lalabas at lalabas yung guidance na yan, hindi pwedeng hindi. Ang mahirap yung hindi mo alam ko anong gagawin, tapos gawa ka ng gawa. Because you could be committing a lot of mistakes and then a lot of your life has to be spent correcting those mistakes. If you don't know what to do, then don't do it. Stay put. Wait upon the Lord. Doon pa lang, pwede tayo mag-uwian. May lesson na. Matthew 2, 11. The wise men came to the house where the child was with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. 
So why sila in this area? Kasi hindi si Jose, hindi si Marie, ang kanilang winnership. Ang kanilang winnership, yung ipinanganak na dating galing sa loob ng chan ni Mary. Si Jose, Marie, chan. <laughs> Kaya daw siya ang laging kanta pagpasko. Kasi si Jose, si Marie, si Chan. But the star was yung laman nung Chan. And they were wise enough. They worshiped the child. We should be as wise. Huwag tayong malito kung sino dapat ang object of worship. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. Gusto gusto niya umuwi, no? Para sabihin sa kay Yaya, yung Jose, Marie, Chan na yan. Yung iba, tinetext na agad. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. Then they opened the boxes of gifts that they had brought for him. They gave him treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So there's wisdom here. They give the gifts to Jesus. Hindi kay Mary or kay Joseph. At lalong lalo na, why sila? Kasi hindi sila nag-exchange gifts. Can you imagine kung pagkaharap kay Jesus, nagbunutan sila? Oh, Chris Kringle tayo. 500 pesos minimum. No, they were wise. They gave the gifts to the child. But there's a question here that nobody seems to be asking for 2,000 years. What were the gifts for? Those gifts were never mentioned again. There is no account of Jesus or Mary or Joseph ever using them. So the question is, was it wise to give those gifts at all? Except perhaps on some symbolic or prophetic value, it had no meaning in the life of Mary as the mother. Siguro kung mga babae ang dumating na bisita, the wise queens, ang dala nila, diapers, di ba? Mga formula, mga gamit, which would have served a very practical purpose. But the theology behind the gifts is beyond us. The Bible writers never explained. But maybe because it was second nature to them. They were royals, they were aristocrats, so they would give such kind of gifts. Pero sa ating buhay ngayon, ang tanong is, was, what was it wise to give those gifts at all? At mahalaga sa atin, we should be wise in giving gifts. Give, 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 give. Apat na kalendaryo na yung natanggap niya ngayon, utang na loob, hindi naman napapalitan yung date. Tama bang gift yun? Tama bang magbigay tayo ng mga gift na hindi naman talaga magagamit? May maiabot ka lang. How much percent of gifts really get used? Less than 20? Kasi yung iba, i-recycle mo o itatago mo, sayang itapon, pero hindi ba rin naman magamit? We should be wise. Paulit-ulit ang Pasko, pag binuksan yung mga cabinet nyo, siguro may Pasko pa kaya ng 1994 na nandun pa yung gift. Sayang. When we give, tanong muna natin sa sarili natin, useful ba? Practical ba? Diba? Affordable ba para sa iyo na magbigay ng ganyang gift? At kung hindi ka wise men or wise women or hindi ka king o queen, magtigil lang ka regalo na sobrang mamahalin. Dapat nag-celebrate ka ng Pasko pagdating ng bagong taon, wala kang utang dahil ka bibigay mo ng mga regalo ang hindi mo naman kaya ibigay. Tigilan niya mga opresyon ng Christmas na yan. Diba? Yung mga tradisyon na idinagdag ng iba sa celebration, hindi na natin naiintindihin yung theology ng Pasko, tapos sumasali tayo sa mga kabaliwan na walang katapos ang shopping, gastusan, kainan ng kainan, na uwi sa bahay, nagsisisi. Busog ako, sobra-sobra busog ako. Yung mga ganyang klase, yung mga, wala naman yan sa tunay na diwa ng Pasko, dapat marunong tayo rin mag-screen. Sumala. Huwag nating Wala na lang tayong katanong-tanong, tanggap na lang tayo ng tanggap ng lahat ng mga tradisyon. Dapat suriin natin yung mga yan. Back to the story. Matthew 2.12 But God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod. So you see, diretso nang sumali ang Diyos sa kwento. Kasi baka bumalik pa sila, ikwento pa nila address. So sabi niya, no, 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 huwag kayong babalik. So God had to directly intervene and instruct them to keep quiet. So they went home to their own country a different way. Anong lesson sa atin yan, mga kapatid? Makiramdam sa guidance ng Diyos. Huwag pa dalos-dalos, be still, and hear God's voice. Actually, there is that part of that wise man in all of us. Ngayong lesson nila, dapat lesson din natin. 
kailangan sila ay nag-dream. So you dream. But before you dream, you have to sleep. And for you to have a good sleep, you really have to be in the mindset to rest. Be restful. Huwag pagutin ang isip. Huwag pagutin ang katawan sa mga hindi naman dapat pagpaguran. Kasi pag pagod ka na naginip ka, hindi dream ang tawag doon. Bangungot. And many bangungots are born just out of fatigue. Kaya kailan pinapahinga mo talaga yung katawan mo at huwag mong i-over-theologize sa mga napapanaginipan. Baka kulang ka lang talaga sa pahinga. And be very flexible. They had plans, pero pinalitan nila nung may guidance si Lord na huwag kayo bumalik sa Jerusalem. Humanap kayo na ibang daraanan. And very importantly, isang major lesson natin from the wise men, huwag maingay, huwag madaldal. Napakadaldal kasi nila. Dapat sila naghanap na lang, sinunda nila yung star. But they upset an entire religious and political system. It will have repercussions. Matthew 2, 13-14 After the wise men left, an angel from the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Get up, take the child with his mother and escape to Egypt. Herod wants to kill the child and will soon start looking for him. Stay in Egypt until I tell you to come back. So Joseph got ready and left for Egypt with the child and the mother. They left during the night. Nagkaroon tuloy ng evacuation. Dahil dito sa mga wise men na ito. Matthew 2, 16-18, Herod saw that the wise men had fooled him and he was very angry. So he gave an order to kill all the baby boys in Bethlehem and the whole area around Bethlehem. Herod learned from the wise men the time the baby was born. It was now two years from the time. So he said to kill all the boys who were two years old and younger. Sa kadaldalan. Mga kapatid, look at us, kasi there could be that wise men in us, huwag magpahamak ng mga ninyos inosentes. Kaya ang tawag niyan sa celebration, ninyos inosentes, you know, Walang malay na mga bata na patay dahil sa katabila ng mga wise men na ito. So ulitin natin, ha? At yung sasabihin ko, ulitin nyo sa katabi nyo. Tandaan nyo, mahirap kasi tandaan. Okay, ready? Huwag matabil. Yun lang. Gano'ng karami ng tao na pahamak dahil sa inyong dila? Yung wala ka kamalay-malay, nakakasira ka na pala ng pamilya, nakakagiba ka na ng karir, clueless ka lang, matabil ka lang kasi. So dapat, need to know basis lang. Ang tinatanong natin, sinasabi lang natin, yung kailangan lang niyang malaman. Hindi yung mga kung ano-ano. Yung, ang bitring, nasaan ang mga mam mo? Ay, umalis po sila, nagpunta po sa Boracay, nag-aaway nga po sila nung umalis. Pero may dalan man po silang 50,000 pesos. Yung, kailangan po ba sabihin yun? Ang dami-dami natin sinasabi na hindi kailangan. Lalo kung may kapatid ka, halimbawa na medyo may posisyon sa lipunan o pinsan o kamag-anak na medyo may posisyon na tinitigala o kilala o may kapangyarihan, huwag kang bigay na bigay na information tungkol sa kanila. Kung ikaw yan, may alam na information tungkol sa people who are in important positions, it is upon you to keep that confidential. Yung sasabihin mo, I'm not at liberty to talk about it. Yung, saan ba sila nagpunta? Naku, hindi po ako at liberty to talk about it. Hindi yung nahihiya ka, sasabihin mo na tuloy, magbubulgar ka na ng mga lihim ng may lihim. Hindi naman kailangan. Ito, ang isa sa mga lesson ng Pasko, ha, na hindi natin naaalalang. Oo nga, no? Kung hindi sila matabil, dapat hindi naman napatay yung kotakot-takot ng mga batang yun. Maraming napahamak. So, huwag maingay. Huwag magingay. Be wise. Kaya siguro, ang paboritong-paborito ng maraming kanta ng Pasko ay... Dapat tahimik. Ano yon? Dapat ganyan kayo magsalita, ha? Hindi laging ganito. May dalawang celebration. Yung quiet, meron yung maingay. Dapat meron tayong wisdom sa pang-araw-araw na buhay kung kailan tayo dapat quiet at kung kailan tayo maingay. Lahat may tamang panahon. For everything there is season and a time for every matter under heaven. Kaya lagi natin itatanong, time ba to talk? May nagre-reklamo ito ko sa inyong kung sino, 
time ba to talk or to just be quiet? Kagagatungan mo lang, lalaki-lalo yung apoy, mag-vulgar ka ng mga lihim ng iba, may, ipi, may senior sa'yo, ipo-forward mo na, ipapas mo na kung kanin-kanino. You know, that was the unwiseness of the so-called wise men. Pag-isip-isipan natin, mga kapatid, kung ano mga lesson natin sa buhay, learned from the wise men, and let's be wiser than they. No? Meron silang mga indiscretions, maraming napahamak. Huwag tayong magpahamak ng iba dahil lang sakatin ang ating mga dila. And remember, people can be upset. People can have their issues. People will have their agenda. Be very sensitive when you open your mouth. Lord, salamat po sa mga simple mga leksyon na nakakaligtaan namin bigyan ng pansin dahil sa ingay, gulo at kulay ng kapaskuhan. Ituro mo sa amin yung lesson from the wise men, Lord, that we could, in our own lives, be more discreet, be more quiet, be more discerning, lalong-lalong na kung aming mga ingay ay magiging dahilan ng kapahamakan ng iba. Sa mga naging damage sa iba, Panginoon, patawarin niyo po kami at nawabigyan kami ng karunungan na ito ay hindi na uulitin pa. Mga kapatid, pag-isip-isipan natin ang kwento ng wise men na ito. I-apply sa buhay natin mga lesson. At dagdagan pa, because our life is known only by us, so we know how we will apply this in our private lives. Lord, teach us. So that this Christmas time, meron mga bagong badagdag sa mga timeless lessons that we can benefit from. Be alone with the Lord, thanking the Father that He sent His Son, Jesus. At nawa sa ating pag-share ng gospel, ng mga good news, hindi tayo makatapak ng iba, hindi tayo makasakit ng mga damdamin, at huwag tayo makapagpahamak. Father, teach us as we bow before you and hear your still and small voice. Love to you, mga pamangkin. Dito tayo mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Dito tayo mag-aral ng mga practical na bagay. Magdalanginan para sa isa't isa. Makinig ng mga mensahe. At dito tayo magsasama-sama spiritually. Sa ating official Ed Lapis YouTube channel na ang address ay Sabi ni Kuya Ed. Remember, dito tayo ha? Sabi ni Kuya Ed ang ating official YouTube channel.